Breakfast on Pluto, released in 2005. Centered on the life and times of a transgendered woman in the 1970s, Breakfast on Pluto was the first film made by Killian Murphy and Liam Neeson following Batman Begins. Neeson plays a Catholic priest named Father Liam. Murphy plays the main protagonist, Patrick Kitten Braden. Oh, I'm not a boy, sir. I'm a girl. Oh, you're a girl? Yes. You can call me Patricia. That's my name, sir. Can I tell you a story? Patricia? Oh, please do. Stories are what I love. You love stories? Love stories. Very well, sir. I'm all ears. Once upon a time, there was a boy who never knew his father and mother. Oh, how sad. How unbearably sad was he an unbearably sad little boy. He, he didn't seem so. No, he laughed. He laughed a lot. Perhaps the kind of laughter that disguises tears. The story is interwoven with historical elements of the conflicts with the Irish Republican Army and amazing music from the heyday of 70s pop and rock. Yes, you might have to soon enough. So fucking what, Charlie? I sell Republican news a few fucking papers. Big deal. What are you, my fucking wife? Don't lie to me, Erwin. I don't believe your stories. I'm involved in nothing. I sell their paper. For all the difference I make in this tip, nobody gives a fuck. Soon enough to fucking win. If I find out your lining, I'll finish it, I swear. I will finish it with me. See if I fucking care. The people Kitten meets along the way are so well rounded and tend to stay on the screen so long that they feel like people you would meet. They aren't creatures with one note to play, but have layers. The hardest characters turn around and surprise you with their compassion. This is no life for a young man like you, Patrick. Oh, cuff me then. Carry me to my sweet cell. No. A group of girls got themselves off the street, Patrick. Set up a co-op. What do you mean co-op? You know, no. Sort of like a union, you could call it. Girls? Hello. Come on. It's not ideal, but it's safe and legal. Then the people you meet who we think will be kind and caring turn out to only want to use Kitten and discard her as quickly. Oh, you fucking Nazi boss! Don't fucking come back! And her Wait. name is Scratch Your Eyes Out and Bite Your Bleeding Nose Off. And my name is Patricia Kitten Braden. Pleased to meet you, Patricia Kitten Braden. You like it? It's beautiful. Like it. <laughs> oh, 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 <coughs> but did true love <coughs> save Kitten from the hands of the beast in that worst of all fairy tales? No. What saved Kit was her precious perfume spray, bought for two ninety nine in Roach's stores on Henry Street before she left her beloved Emerald Isle. The film addresses numerous controversial topics in a rich and simple narrative. The different chapters we explore leave us to a new portion of Kitten's life over the course of time, including being suspected of international terrorism. Silly can you get putting an X across my wings? Oh my God. God. So silly! It's eleven fucking people! Blow to pieces, you twisted little cunt! One element we get from the narrative is that Patrick is a storyteller. He figures out in his creative writing course who his father might be. 
Mitzi Gaynor with a head of bubble cut curls that would make any man's privates go sprung. Got the standard uniform, Father. The blue house coat with the bow at the back. The tan stockings, colour stale tea. The owl hairnet, which says to all them Mickeys whose duty it is to stay inside and wear black serge, no Mickeys today. Darn boys, that's it, my sweets. Off with you and say your prayers. Breakfast, Father. My God, now you're talking. But Mickey is devious. And no matter how much you tell him, he simply won't stay down. But drab old house coats and tea-colored stockings might well have kept him down if it wasn't for that pesky spot of grease. Oh, this is powerful altogether. And when interrogated under suspicion for planting a bomb, makes up a fantastic story about defeating the IRA with a bottle of Chanel Number no. Five. And penetrated the deepest recesses of the Republican sphincter. With her secret anti-terrorist spray, named after Gabrielle Coco Chanel's lucky number. Oh, but Lord, was she sick of that black? <gasps> what is it with freedom fighters and couture anyway? while Kitten is only searching for her mother, who abandoned her as an infant at Father Liam's house. Are you a, oh my God. Feeling better, love? Oh, yes. Some more tea? No, thank you. So, what's this survey about, then? Oh. It's about phones, Mum. Phones? With Telecom. Yes, British Telecom. Um, are you about to phone? She falls into sex work and eventually finds a safe home and a family, but it doesn't end there. Is that when you're pregnant, you need to dress like a lollipop lady? I know of no such rule, Patrick. No. So I thought. This little hippie number might give her the lift she needs. Oh, very nice. Velvet, Father. Like crushed grass. Oh, look, Father. Oh, can we try the silver for her, Mrs? Is it for yourself? How much is that dog in the window? <laughs> the one with the waggity tail. How much is that dog in the window? Jesus Christ, Miss Holy Mother. Why doesn't the bishop do something? Bishop, the bishop we have isn't worth a damn.
film won the Irish Film and TV Awards for Best Actor in a Lead Role in a Feature Film, Best Director, Best Hair and Makeup for Film, Best Script for Film, and the National Board of Review's Special Recognition for Excellence in Filmmaking. It's not for the faint-hearted, but if you want to see an excellent human drama centered around fascinating characters or a piece of great LGBTQIA film, then Breakfast on Pluto is for you. Four out of five.